Hello, say Charata. Hey, do you know the Hulk? You know that green monster that crushes things in rage? Well, when he calms down, he returns to his human shape, also known as Bruce Banner. Dr. Bruce Banner, a very intelligent scientist, but much weaker than the Hulk. Well, one thing that you may not know is that in 1886, a scientist has demonstrated the relationship between our mental activity and our physical force, our motor ability. He was using a dynamometer, a device that measures the force applied on it, and this scientist was able to do experiments showing that the amount of force that a person applied was different if he or she was performing a difficult intellectual task at the same time. And what was the difference? The difference was in this case that he had groups of people doing complicated calculations or reading very difficult texts while using that device, the dynamometer. And those folks had less physical force than people doing a much more simple activity, a more simple calculation or reading. You can try to deplete your mental resources as well. You can try this experiment right now. Just open a new tab, go to YouTube and find some video tutorial on dancing or on martial arts. Just be sure to choose something that uh, it's some type of a move that you have not mastered yet. And as you watch this video, you try to copy the moves from that tutorial video, you can also try to do some simple mental activity. Something like, I don't know, counting consonants of the word parallelogram or unconstitutional. And what we are likely to see here is that we will see that we have different mental resources and how we use those mental resources will determine our efficiency. Let's think of something a little bit more practical. Think about your work environment or your study environment. And then I ask you, how many things do you have to do at the same time? How many things in your work routine are consuming the potential and also harming the quality of your performance? Think about that. Just as in the earlier experiment where people lost up to 50% of their physical strength because they had to do a difficult mental activity at the same time, it is quite likely that if you're doing that tutorial while trying to think about something else, you are not very coordinated. So here is the obvious tip. And um, if you try to study at the same time that you're thinking about notifications or checking those pings in your social networks, or if you're working thinking about the emails you have to reply today, your mental capacity will also decrease. And here are two tips that will help you to increase your performance. Number one, you have to know your priorities. One of the most important things you can do to boost your performance in daily life is to prioritize. You have to know the importance of each particular demand in relation to others. If you tend to juggle simultaneous tasks, you have to learn how to do one thing at a time. Choose what you're going to finish first, and then only after you finish that particular task, you go to the next activity. We have to admit, however, that prioritizing things, which is uh, to be ranking each one of these tasks as more or less important, can be extremely tiresome. You have to be thinking and analyzing each activity, its degree of importance and the consequences of doing it before or after other tasks that are also in your to-do list. Maybe you also have to communicate with people around you so that they understand that you're focused on that particular thing and they moderate their expectations. If you're having difficulty with all those things, I recommend you to take our focus course by going to arata.se forward slash focus course. This is a very practical and objective course. It goes straight to the point. It doesn't allow you to be wasting time procrastinating. And it's a very short course, only two hours long. So it's sure that you can finish it today. Switch on the autopilot. The second tip I'm going to give you requires a little bit of effort and training and practice from your part. You have to be strengthening your skills until you arrive to that moment that that particular thing that you're doing, it becomes an automatic routine in your life. Do you remember that I told you to look for a dance or a martial art that you have not mastered yet? And I suggested this because 
When you practice the same activity over and over, as in the case of a dance or some martial art, maybe you'll get to the point when you can do that thing at some unconscious level of competence. That is, with practice, you can perform those moves so well, so skillfully, that you don't need a lot of cognitive effort. A very good example of this is when we learn to drive. In the early days, probably everything that you're doing required a lot of effort. You had to be remembering everything to put on your safety belt and to adjust the mirrors, change gears at the right time and to be signaling your turns, watching other vehicles around you. It was very complicated. But then after a few years of practice, everything became so easy. You're now driving on autopilot, right? With time and also with some confidence and uh, some safe situations you can have a nice conversation with the passenger next to you but that would be impossible in the early days remember so thinking about this nature of repetition ask yourself to what activities should i dedicate in my deliberate practice to achieve this level of unconscious competence you can achieve this unconscious competence in skills that will allow you to complete the tasks without too much effort. And that will allow you to do other activities at the same time without a significant drop in your quality of work. There is a video in which I talk more about the deliberate practice. It is arata.sc forward slash hello37. Gradually, as you work and you study, you have to develop a critical eye to which you will be examining your own performance. You have to be always thinking about this, like, what am I doing? Am I really achieving the desired results that I wanted? Am I making too many mistakes that I could have avoided? Hmm. Am I taking too much time in this particular activity? These are all questions that can help you to realize the quality of what you're doing. And it may be the case that you might need to learn to prioritize your tasks a little bit better. And you have to practice that particular skill a little bit more so you have unconscious competence. You have maybe to organize yourself better. I wrote a mini ebook on the topic of organization and focus, and you can download it now going to the link arata.se forward slash focus and organization.